None of us wake up in the morning expecting to die. But on September 11, 2001, thousands did in an attack that defined the first decade of the 21st century, and so far has proven influential in the second. Our story today begins a little before 8 in the morning on that fateful day at Logan Airport in Boston. A Boeing 767 aircraft designated as American Airlines Flight 11 was loaded with 81 passengers and 11 crew members. Among them were five terrorists, Mohammed Atta, a pilot, Walid al-Shehi, Wail al-Shehi, Abdul Aziz al-Omari, and Satam al-Sukami. But perhaps more important to the terrorists than the human lives aboard was the fuel. Flight 11 was going to be flying all the way from Boston to Los Angeles, 2,605 miles in a straight line. Over the course of this video, we will follow Flight 11 from just before takeoff until its impact with the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Flight 11 started off as any other flight would have. It took off 14 minutes late at 7.59 a.m. from Logan with all five terrorists on board. Omari and Atta had come from Portland and were taking Flight 11 as a connection flight. The aircraft climbed up to cruising altitude. The last command from air traffic control acknowledged by the aircraft was at 8.13 a.m., 14 minutes after takeoff. It is believed that the airplane was hijacked somewhere around this time, although it could have been as late as 8.21 a.m. Several passengers in first class were killed as the terrorists breached the cockpit. Imagine yourself in the cabin of an airplane. Now imagine you hear this. What you have just heard is the voice of Mohammed Atta in the cockpit of Flight 11, trying to keep the passengers calm. What he did not know was that he was broadcasting over the radio for everyone to hear. But Mohammed Atta was not the only one aboard Flight 11 relaying information to the outside world. One of the flight attendants, Betty Ong, made a call which provides even more insight into the happenings on that fateful flight. Okay, my name is Betty Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. Okay. And the cockpit is not answering their phone. And there's somebody staffed in business class, and there's, we can't breathe in business class. Somebody's got mates or something. Can you describe the person that you said someone is what in business class? Um, I'm, I'm sitting in the back. Somebody's coming back from business. If you can hold on for one second, they're coming back. After being hijacked, Flight 11 deviated from its planned course, eventually making a 100-degree turn to the south-southeast to follow the Hudson River to New York. Pilots often use landmarks such as a highway, or in this case a river, to navigate. Because Flight 11's transponder, which is a tracking device, was turned off, it was very difficult to track. So although the military attempted to get some fighter jets airborne, it was hard to tell where they needed to go, and so the fighters weren't in the air until over six minutes after Flight 11 crashed, 15 minutes after the military was originally notified of the hijacking. Imagine looking out the window of a hijacked aircraft and seeing a city below you, far too low. You have no idea what's going on. That was exactly the case with another flight attendant on board Flight 11, Madeline Sweeney. She called the ground manager of American Airlines at Logan, Michael Woodward, and stayed on line with him for 25 minutes until the plane crashed. Although the call was not recorded, he took detailed notes. As they were approaching the tower, she said, I see the water. I see the buildings. I see buildings. Then, after a pause, she quietly said, Oh my God, and the line went dead.
At this point, it was 8.46.40 in the morning on September 11th, 2001. It was at this moment in time that the chaos began. American Airlines Flight 11 struck the North Tower of New York's World Trade Center, killing everyone aboard. It was traveling at 470 miles per hour. As mentioned before, the aircraft had a lot of fuel for its cross-country voyage, essentially making it a flying bomb in the hands of the hijackers. In fact, it is estimated that the airplane still had over 10,000 gallons of extremely flammable jet fuel when it hit the tower. At 10.28 a.m., less than two hours after impact, the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. Between the falls of the two towers, the two plane crashes, and the people jumping out of windows, thousands of lives were lost, but over 15,000 people did make it out of the towers alive. Although terrifying, the attacks did something that Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda believed responsible for the attack never intended. It united the country together as one.